Welcome to a very quick run through on arguably an undergraduate's most terrifying bit of kit to use, the compound binocular microscope. I've got two examples here. Um, one is a research microscope and one is a sort of higher end university student microscope. So this is the higher end university microscope and of course this is the research microscope. The reason I've got two of them over here is just to give you an idea that regardless of what kind of microscope you tend to use, the component parts are always going to be the same. They will have, for instance, if I use the older model, an ocular eyepiece. The ocular eyepiece, of course, ocular meaning eye. Um, it's an eye eyepiece, eye eye, hey, okay, good stuff, um, which is adjustable to the interpupillary distance, the, the width of your eyes. So if you're a weird person like me, it's like usually quite close together. Um, if you are somewhat not, then it's gonna be considerably further apart. Um, just below that, you have the objective lenses. And these are a variety of different magnifications, starting um, usually color-coded as well. So for instance, the red one here is a times four, the yellow one here is a times 10, the green one a times 20, and the blue one a times 40. Um, those obviously as your magnification are, are those specific magnifications, but bear in mind, these lenses are times 10 magnification. So whenever you're looking at magnification for a microscope, 10 multiplied by whatever you've got. So the 10 times the 10, 100 times magnification. Then you have the stage, that's this whole unit here, and these little clips here, these hold the slides in place for you. So you simply slide, you slide into there and it will clip into place quite happily. You can move the stage in an X and Y axis, and it's controlled by a little thing that hangs out the side. So if you watch the stage, and I adjust the top one, back one forward, bottom one, left and right. Just below that, here you have the condenser. This allows the amount of light um, from your light source, which can be either an LED bulb, uh, an, a diode, or just sunlight. And you can open or close that, and we'll look at that in depth in just a second when we come to colo illumination. Finally, you have a diaphragm, which again, allows more or less light into what you are looking at. Last thing to be okay notice of are the focus on the outside and the inside ones. Um, the outside one is a coarse adjustment focus. So if I turn this one here and you watch the objective lens on the stage, turning that brings that very rapidly up and down. Turning it with a fine adjusting one, it's much less noticeable. So your rule of thumb will always be coarse adjustment for the very low lenses, times four, sometimes with care, times 10, because there's less chance of you smashing the objective lens into your slide. Anything over these two, use fine adjustment only. Now there's a little bit of a trick when it comes to using microscopy, which is you always start the least magnification, working your way gradually upwards. Don't stick it under your microscope um, on this kind of magnification and try and expect to find it, you won't. So the next thing I'm going to show you is something called colo illumination. And I'm going to use this big posh one because I can hook it up to a camera so you can see exactly what I can see. Uh, a colo illumination is the process where you align the light source from the bottom all the way through the various lenses and into your own eye. Very useful, helps you make sure you're looking at the right colors, the right images, crystal clear. But if you're using a camera, for instance, um, definitely a useful thing. Now, what I've got under the microscope at this precise point in time is a bit of lung tissue. So hopefully you can all see that one there. Um, and it looks fine, absolutely fine. But it's not, it's out of alignment. And what we're going to do is look at how you can get this properly done. So I'm just going to put the magnification on. Apologies for the wibble wall. Now then, what I'm going to do first of all is you peer down the microscope lens and you get your sample into focus. So you don't want it looking weirdly out of focus like that. Nice and sharp in focus. Just like this. Let's see if I can increase your magnification a bit. There we go. Now then, the first step you do is you close the diaphragm. 
And what that does is it creates this dark circle. That needs to be a hexagonal shape with razor sharp edges. And the way you do that, I should point out as well, close the condenser as well. So that just a bit less light means you get those sharp edges. Now the sharp edges, you obtain that by raising and lowering the light source. So for instance, if I lower the light source, you see how it gets bigger. If I raise the light source, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually you get a much more crisp outline. Now, as you can see, there's a blue cross in the middle of the screen. That represents the center of the field of view. And as you can see, um, it's definitely not. Now, bear in mind, yours will be just a little bit out of focus to my own because you've got a camera attached to it. So if I was to set this up to be perfect for a camera, you'd be looking at something that is quite tight like that. A good, easy way to make sure that you are the right uh, plane for the light to be in is if you go too far, you see the light becomes kind of red. If you go too low, it becomes blue. So you're ideally aiming for no light or a purplish light. Once you've got that, you now need to adjust it. And in order to do that, adjust the location, I put these two little things in here. And they're little pins, and here they are on the other one. One here, and one here. And these operate in an X, Y direction to change where the light is. So you can see like that. Now, as you observe, as I turn one of them, it goes up at an angle. And if I turn the other one, it goes off at another angle. These are not straight up, straight down. They're 45 degree offset. So just remember that when you're trying to line them up, it can be a bit of a pig. And anyway, what you try and do is you are trying to line everything up within that little dot, for instance, in the center of your eye, Just like that. And you can check this by then opening up the condense, not the condense, sorry, the diaphragm. And you open the diaphragm up, and what you are looking to see is when you're down the microscope, um, which you won't really see, I'm afraid, as you increase this one here, those hexagonal edges will start to just touch the edge of the field of view. Once they do that, congratulations, your microscope is set up and you're good to go. All you need to do then, open up the condenser and hey presto, you're back in business. And that is Cola Illumination, a quick, easy, fast, dirty way to not only look like a professional, uh, but to make sure your microscope is set up correctly. So the next things we'll be looking at in the next session will be a bit of tissue recognition.